What's up, Internet? My name is Bear of Bear Independent. Some of you may be new to the channel. Now, before we get started, understand I hate the word prepper. I don't like it. I can barely get down with the term survivalist. I think your mind should be prepared. But a uh, whole other story for another time. But this is the 10 things that a brand new prepper or a novice prepper should do. Says me. Number one, get out of debt right now. Stop accruing debt. Stop doing it. Just get out of debt. I consult with a lot of people. And one of the biggest questions I get is, where am I supposed to get the money for prepping? <clears throat> well, get out of debt. That's the first thing. If you're paying down lots of recurring monthly payments, you're blowing a lot of money. So just stop. And you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You know, uh, Robert Kiyosaki, Dave Ramsey, you know, Tim Ferriss, there's lots of people who've come before us who can get you squared away on this. So get out of debt. Step two is develop a side hustle, which is what all the kids these days are calling extra work. Did you know that people who work 10% more hours per week, I'm sorry, 10 more hours per week, earn 40% more on average? Did you know that? There's something for you to put in your pipe and smoke. Get some OT at work. Start an Amazon resale store. Do stuff, figure it out. Maybe you're really passionate about crocheting tactical mag holders. Do it, F like figure it out. Figure out a way, we live in the age of the internet right now. Figure out a way to join whatever your passion is with what your skill is. Put it out there on the internet. You can earn some extra bucks and you can use that to <clears throat> acquire the things and the training that one would need to be better prepared for the end of the world. Step three, buy a year's worth of food. That's 750 pounds of food, grains, vegetables, proteins, and vitamins uh, per person. 750 pounds, approximately two pounds per person per day. That works out to about 3,000 calories per person per day. Now, a lot of people would say you don't need that much, but I'm going to tell you right now, if the world ends, you're going to be burning some calories, brother. Believe me, believe me, it's tremendous. Everybody tells me. And Mexico is going to pay for it. Buy a year's worth of food for everybody in your house and for everybody that's coming to your house whom you love. If that's 10 people, you need 10 years worth of food, 7,500 pounds. If there's only two of you, 1,500 pounds, 750 pounds per person per year. Break down on that, hang out here at the channel and we'll cover that. Or come see us on Patreon, we talk about that stuff constantly. I'll even do a doobly-doo, right cheer -up. Number four, get your bobs, your bowls, and your bops figured out. Your bug out bag, your bug out location, and your bug out plan, okay? A lot of people get this messed up. They start with the bag first. That's wrong. Figure out where you're going first. That's your bug out location. Figure out where you're going when the balloon goes up. Once you know what the location is, you can figure out a plan to get there. Now, why is that important? Because if it's going to take you three days to get there and you only can carry one day's worth of food and water in your pack, you have a problem. Or if it's going to take you three days to get there and your pack's set up for 10 days, you have a problem. So figure out your bug out location first. Where are you going? Then your plan. How am I getting there? And then you can put the bag, the bug out bag together. And a lot of people think that the bug out bag is the time to go into fantasy mode and strap all kinds of crap that they're never going to use onto the inside and outside of their bags. That they have all these capabilities. But you really just need a small assortment of things. You need a cutting tool, combustion, cordage, container, cover you're good. Maybe calories, depending on how far you're going. If you're inside of three days walking, you don't need calories. If you're outside of three days walking, you might consider it. And by the way, the idea that you're going to hunt, fish, trap, and scavenge your way to prosperity after the balloon goes up, losing proposition. Why? Because if you could do that, you'd already be doing it. So quit lying to yourself. That's not going to happen. Number five, plant a garden. 
especially if you're one of these people that has a survival seed vault. Oh, when the balloon goes up, I'm just gonna take this thing, I'm gonna plant all these seeds that are inside this survival seed vault, and then we'll just thrive. Again, if you could do it, you'd already be doing it. The way to learn is by doing. So take your survival seed vault into your backyard, till up a piece of land, and start learning, start doing, because you're gonna find out real quick, A, it's not as easy as you thought it was, B, you didn't get the yield that you thought you were gonna get, and C, your germination rate on all those seeds is pretty terrible. So learn by doing. Plant a garden, start practicing. And I don't wanna hear, well, you don't understand, I live in suburbia because I was on a third of an acre with 11 raised beds, row crops, fruit trees, nut trees, uh, berry bushes, grape vines, all the garden vegetables, laying hens, meat birds, meat rabbits, and meat ducks, all in the backyard third of an acre in suburban North Texas. If I can do it, you can do it. And we offset our caloric intake by 40%. We provided 40% for our family in about a half an hour's time per day spent in the backyard. 40% of a family of five. That's 200% of one person. Do the math. Plan a garden, learn by doing. Yeah, and you can even get livestock involved. In fact, I recommend that you do small livestock because now you can get your compost going and you can start creating closed loop systems where you create your own inputs and utilize your own outputs. It's good stuff. But you're gonna learn that by doing it. You're not gonna learn that the moment the balloon goes up. You're not gonna all of a sudden rise to your level of expectation. That's not possible. You will what rise, I know the words, they're the best words, believe me. You will rise to your level of training. And if you're not training yourself now, you're never gonna get there. So don't kid yourself, start planting a garden now. Next, number six, get you a trauma kit. About 100 bucks on Amazon. After you buy that trauma kit, what are you gonna add to it? You're gonna add quick clot to it, you're gonna add a tourniquet to it, you're gonna get more four x four gauze, more five by nine AB trauma pads, you're gonna get more tape and more gloves because gauze, tape, and gloves fixes pretty much everything. You may also want to get an Israeli wound dressing or another type of presser dressing, okay? But that's what you're going to do. That's going to cost you about $150 altogether. Then you're going to find your local EMS, county EMS, or your local Red Cross, or whatever training you want to find. You're going to find them. You're going to take your $150 bag, go to them, and you're going to blow through all of it in a weekend. And they're going to teach you how to use all of it. Then you're going to spend another 100 bucks, and you're going to get the refill kit for that trauma kit. And so you'll have $250 plus into this. However, you will have good medical training. What's a life worth? What's the life of your daughter worth? Or your wife, or your husband, or your grandpa, or your best friend? Highly recommended. Get a medical kit, get trained on how to use it. And this is not training. You can't watch a hundred skinny medic videos in a row and understand how to actually do the things. Or USMC Doc, who I also highly recommend, or Patriot Nurse, or anybody else. That's not training. Okay, that's entertainment. And I have nothing against them, but that's entertainment, not training. Buy the kit, get the training. Number seven, form a team. But you don't understand, T. It's just so hard. I can't find it, but yeah, I do get it. I get it. I've been there. I've done it. Form a team. Your ranks are going to swell. You might go from three people to 30 people, and all of a sudden you're down to six. Because you got to go through 30 people to get six good ones. And of the six good ones, about four of them will really be bought in, and two of them are still going to sit on the fence. That's how it works. It's not easy. It's not supposed to be easy. Nothing worth doing is easy. Thanks, Teddy Roosevelt. That's a good quote. Form a team. Fall in love with each other. Get in up in each other's business, go do work together, spend your Sunday afternoons trimming trees, dragging brush, fixing the roof, mucking the garden stalls or whatever. Figure it out, but spend time together, get up in each other's life and form a team of like-minded individuals who are preparing as a unit to weather the storm that is SHTF. Number eight, get more training. Keep training. What kind of training, T? CCW be a great place to start. What about ham radio? That'd be a great place to start. TCCC, tactical casualty combat care, or something like that. Just keep training. There's, I mean, permaculture, um, horticulture, regenerative agriculture, 
arbora culture, all the cultures, figure it out. Just keep training. Okay, search and rescue is another really good one. What about um, evasive maneuvers, right? Tactical driving, that's fun. Just keep training. Now you have a team, you got some stuff, you got a little bit of security blanket going because you got food, you got a garden, you're starting to do the things. You can all talk to each other because you got your ham radio licenses and everybody's carrying because you got your CCWs. Keep training. Keep training. Number nine. Yeah, and this is kind of in a specific order. Number nine on this list of 10 is get all the tactical things and be super tactical and only talk to people with knife hands or whatever. All right, buy the tactical stuff. What tactical stuff? Hang out around here, we talk about that a lot. We have, <laughs> we've had like two weeks worth of Patreon content just digging into what about the tactical stuff here lately. So get the tactical stuff, learn how to use the tactical stuff, be comfortable. We'll put this right here. Be comfortable walking around with a round chamber, just like your CCW, right? Get comfy with it. Just these things go where I go on this land. Cuts. Buy the tactical stuff, do the tactical stuff. Go from static shooting drills, ka-cha, ka-cha, to dynamic, moving around, around things, under things, sideways, right? Start figuring that out and doing that work. And it's a blast, it's a lot of fun, right? And you have the time and you have the money because you're putting in a little extra time at the office, you're making more money, right? But you're spending less money because you're producing your own inputs in your backyard, you're eating your own produce, it's the bomb, right? It's the bomb. And you're getting more stuff done around uh, at the house, your honeydew list is getting knocked out because you got your team of people helping you out. So now you have the time and money to go train. So go train, buy the tactical things, do the tactical things, but don't get caught up in the hype. Okay, they're a means to protect all the other things. They're not the thing, right? They're just a part of the things. They are not the thing. They're just how you protect all the other things, the most important of which being your team, your people, okay? Lastly, buy a piece of land. Whether it's as a team, as a tribe, as individuals, maybe everybody buys their own pieces of land all next to each other or near each other or whatever and learn to homestead. Take everything that you've learned in this journey that you've been doing and apply it large scale to the homestead, okay? Because this around here is the ultimate expression of preparedness. I'm not worried about the zombie apocalypse. Where, where are they? They're not. They're not here. I'm not worried about uh, rising food prices because I produce my own and I have lots of food storage. I'm not worried per se of uh, intruders and trespasses and the whole nine because we can do the things. I'm not worried about all the work that this is because we have the people, we have the tribe, we have the community. So a homestead is the ultimate, in my opinion, expression of preparedness. Come out of her, my people, lest you partake of her sins and plagues. Get out on a piece of land and start doing all the things with all your friends, playing with all your toys, producing all of your own inputs, utilizing all of your own outputs, and just enjoying life without the stress. The world's gonna end! Yeah, the world is gonna end sooner or later. I don't want it to end. I don't want it to end at all, but you know what? I'm not gonna sit around worrying about it, right? We meet anxiety with action around here. So welcome to Bear Independent if you're new. Those are our top 10 pieces of advice for new or existing preppers or people that just wanna be independent from the system. If this was of any use to you at all, please like, comment, subscribe, share, do all of those things. There's always a doobly-doo that comes up at the end of the video. You can check us out on Patreon. It's a dollar a month. You can ask me pointed questions. Hey, man, what do you think about this? And I will do a 15-minute video on it, that thing, for you. There's over 100 videos there as well. Shameless plug, you bet you took us. Shameless plug. So thank you for being here, and I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. Shalom.